Namaste everybody, welcome to the Yoga Candy YouTube channel. My name is Candice and today we have Yoga for Building Stamina. Now this was a request by one of you and I just thought it was such a great idea because I know especially when you're just starting out in yoga or if you've been doing yoga for about a year or so but your stamina is just still not there to do a full-blown like power flow. So today's class is going to be quite stop and start. We're going to be doing some sort of power um, strength building type poses in between resting and child's pose or in a sort of um, restful stretch. So if you're a little bit more beginner you may struggle but just try and follow along. It's more of an all levels class, it's not complete beginner but I would recommend you guys have a yoga block or two handy. If you don't have yoga blocks guys I really recommend getting them. They're really handy just to help you rest into a posture also really handy to get you deeper into a posture so they're really good props to have. If you don't have them currently then I recommend just getting like a really firm pillow or a couple of thick books and have them handy next to your mat but out of the way <laughs> there'll only be the odd pose where we'll need them. So everybody ah, take a deep breath, ah, exhale out the nose, out the mouth. We're going to begin in a nice seated position, any position of your choice, cross-legged preferably. Roll your shoulders back and down and take the tops of the hands to the knees, close your eyes, allow your shoulders to drop and just breathe naturally to begin with, close your eyes. Keep your spine nice and long, just imagine someone is pulling you with a string from your head that's connected to your tailbone so everything's in a nice long line. Before we begin building little bits of heat we're just going to start off tuning into the body. Just noticing where are you feeling tired today? What parts of the body do you need to focus on a little more? Perhaps drawing the breath down to those areas, bringing awareness to those parts of the body that feel a little tireder, that need some extra TLC. And they'll start to deepen the breath and keep that breath in and out of the nose throughout today's class. Listen to the breath, how does it sound and how does it feel, is your chest tight? Do you need to maybe deepen it even more, drawing it deep into the belly and then exhaling a little longer? Together, let's just take five deep breaths together here. With the eyes still closed, find some neck rolls just rolling from shoulder to shoulder, nice and slowly. Taking it back to the other side and up to center. Open your eyes, just roll your wrists in one direction. And then in the other, I'm going to take a few side stretches coming over to the left, taking the left arm over towards the left, bringing your right arm up and over your ear. Maybe you can bring your 
chest to face the sky. Start to tilt the chest to the sky as best you can. And then taking it over towards the other side. You don't have to come all the way down to the forearm. You can stay up on the hand. So be where you are today. Don't push the body. And find a little wave now. So just taking it from right to left. Just inhaling that arm up and exhaling as you swap to the other side. Do that one more time each side. And back to centre. Let's come on to all fours, hands underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips. From here, tuck your toes and let's just hover the knees off the ground, starting to build a little heat into the core. Hug your belly button back to your spine. Tuck your tailbone so you're not sticking your bum out. You're keeping it in line with your head. Hold this just for a couple more breaths. Now for a challenge, extend your right leg, keep your left leg where it is. And then bring your right leg back, then extend your left. Draw it back, extend the right. Draw the right back, extend the left. Draw the left back, extend the right. One more time, you've got this. Draw the right back, extend the left. And then rest into your tabletop position. Inhale, drop the belly, look up. Exhale, arch. Tuck the tailbone in the chin. Inhale, drop the belly, look up. Exhale, arch for your cat pose. Inhale, drop the belly, look up for cow pose. One more time, exhale, arch, tuck in the tailbone and the chin. Inhale, drop the belly, look up. And then extend the hands out long in front of you. Keep your knees where they are. Draw your forehead down to the ground for puppy pose. If this is too much, just place one of your props underneath your forehead and this will just lift you a little higher and allow you to get into the pose. Keep your hips in line with your knees. Breathe deep. Coming back into our tabletop, send your hips to the sky for downward facing dog. Just walk your dog by bending through the knees. And now don't worry if you can't get your heels to touch the ground. Perhaps with time they will. If you would like to, you can find some stillness here, drawing your heels towards the floor as close as they can get. Hug your belly button back. Externally rotate your shoulder blades as if you're trying to get your armpits to look at each other. So you're pulling your shoulder blades apart. Slightly internally rotate your knees. And put some pressure into your thumbs, your index finger and your baby fingers. Now, coming on forward, rolling forward, holding a plank pose. If you're a little more beginner, you may just want to bring your knees to the ground in a nice, easy plank. 
but wherever you are, keep your tailbone and your head in a nice long line. Don't let your tailbone lift or sink too much. Hug your belly button back, hands underneath your shoulders. Holding this for a couple more breaths, you've got this. Sending it back to downward facing dog. <sighs> Draw your feet together. Open your knees as wide as your mat and start to draw your knees down to the floor and extend the arms in a child's pose, a wide-legged child's pose. If you have very tight hips, you may want to sit onto one of your props here. Just place it underneath your tailbone. But otherwise, just give in to gravity. Allow your hips to sink nice and low. Draw your knees together, send your tailbone up and back into your downward facing dog. Now slowly walk your feet between your hands, bending the knees as much as you need to. And hang heavy in a rag doll, holding onto each elbow. Just hang heavy. Inhale, halfway lift, hands to your shins, look forward and fold. Rolling your spine all the way to standing. Inhale, the hands above your head. Watch them as they touch. Draw them to the side body finding some heat and some balance. Balance on your, left, on your right leg and lift your left leg up towards your navel. If you possibly can, try not to hold the knee. Instead, use the strength of your hip flexor to draw that knee towards your chest. If that's not possible, just hold it with your hands. That's totally fine. Squeeze your glutes together and just hold. A couple more breaths. If you possibly can, extend the leg just for a second and draw it back. Now, as slowly as you can, start to roll forward so that your body is 90 degree angle to the ground. Extend the back leg. This is warrior three. You may need your prop here. Place it in front of you and hold your hands onto your prop. You can always bend that standing leg nice and deep, or you can keep it straight. If you want the extra challenge, you're gonna take your hands alongside your body, look at the ground, and don't worry. If you start to fall out of the pose, that's okay. Just come back into it. Now draw that back leg down to the ground into high lunge. Hips are facing forwards, bend into a 90 degree angle to the front leg. Inhale your hands to the sky. Rotate your wrists. See if you can get a little deeper into that front leg. Make sure the knee is in line with the ankle. Rotating the wrists and then bring them to your heart center in prayer pose. Push your hips forward. Squeezing the glutes. This may be quite painful on your legs, especially if you're just starting out. So don't worry, just one more breath. Now 
Now frame your front foot, bring your fingertips to the ground, slowly bringing that back knee to the floor into a low lunge. You might need your block in front of you here and just place your hand or your elbow onto your knee, onto the front knee and sink deep, stretching through the psoas muscle on the left side. Breathe deeply wherever you are. We've got one more little bit of heat here and then we're gonna take a little rest. Tuck the back toes, plant your hands either side of the front foot, lift up off the back knee and step back into plank. Squeeze your glutes, keep them in line with your head. From here, roll onto the right hand, lift the left hand to the sky into side plank. You could take the front foot and place it in front of you for some extra balance. Or you can stack your feet, sending your hips to the sky. You've got this. Hug your belly button back. One more deep breath. Bringing that left hand down to the ground. Slowly take your knees to the floor. Exhale, elbows close to the body. Bring your chest all the way to the floor. Inhale, lift up for baby cobra or full cobra. Exhale, down. Plant your hands underneath your shoulders. So you're in a little gentle back bend here. This is Sphinx pose. Draw your shoulders down behind you. Push your chest through your hands, through your arms. So you're really lifting through the chest. Push your feet into the ground, opening them a slightly wider than hip distance. Close your eyes, take three deep breaths here in your Sphinx pose. Try not to sink into the shoulders. You're lifting that chest, using your shoulder strength here. Ah, and rest down. Send your hips back towards your heels. Open your knees as wide as your mat, taking another rest in our wide-legged child's pose. Extend the arms, forehead to the ground. Allow your hips to hang heavy here. Lift your head off the ground and slowly walk your hands to the left side of the mat, as far over as you can. Take a grip of your right, um, your right wrist and then rest your head down back on the mat. Just taking a little side body stretch here. Try to draw that right armpit down towards the ground to get deeper into that stretch. Come on up, walk your hands over to the other side of the mat. Take a grip of this left, um, left wrist and then rest your head down to the ground, stretching through that left side body.
slowly lift yourself back up. Plant your hand shoulder distance. Draw your knees in line with your wrists, in line with the hips. Tuck your toes, lift the knees, hover them off the ground once again. Hug your belly button back. Just a couple of deep breaths here. And then send your tailbone up into the air, back for your downward facing dog. Hug your belly button back, take a couple of deep breaths. Same on the other side, let's take a really slow walk, bending the knees as much as you need to. Back to the top of the mat between the hands. Exhale, fold. Ah, taking a grip of each elbow, just hang heavy. Bend your knees as generously as you need to. If you're more flexible, keep them straight. Rest the neck, let your neck hang heavy. Inhale, hands to shins, look forward and fold. And now roll your spine all the way into mountain pose. Inhale them up to the sky, look as your palms touch. Draw them back to the side body. Give your legs a little wobble and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side, you guys have got this. Let's inhale, lifting the right leg this time. Now don't worry, if you get really wobbly and you wobble out of a pose, it's okay, just come back in. If you have the strength in the hip flexor, just hold that knee as close towards your chest as possible, hands by your side. Or take a grip of that knee and just pull it towards your body, standing nice and strong, keeping this left glute nice and tight. Hit it, see if it's like a rock. If you can, just let go. We're just gonna take a couple more deep breaths. One more deep breath. If you can, extend it just for a second and maybe start to draw that leg behind you, taking your body, tilting it so that you're a 90 degree angle to the mat, to the ground. Keep your hips in line. If you have the power and the strength, just keep your hands by your side body. If you need to, don't forget, you can use your prop in front of you, place your hands onto it and just keep that leg lifted around a 90 degree angle to the mat. Bend as generously as you need to into the front knee. We're just gonna hold it for another breath here. Don't worry if you fall out. And then very slowly draw that back knee down to the ground, sorry, the back foot. Bend into the front knee, in for our high lunge, our hips are both facing forwards. Inhale the hands to the sky. Try to place this front knee on top of the ankle. See if you can get a little deeper. Hands to the sky, rotate the wrists again. Squeezing the glutes towards each other. And drawing your hands into your heart center in prayer. One more breath here. Now very slowly, as slowly as you can, start to bend the back knee and draw it down to the mat. Ah, in for our low lunge. Send the hips as forward as you can, stretching out that psoas muscle. You can frame the front foot or take a block, place it on the opposite side of the front foot and just rest your forearm onto that front knee giving into gravity, getting low, 
into this low lunge. So wherever you are, let's take a couple of deep breaths. Just enjoy this moment together. Untuck the back, sorry, tuck the back toes. Slowly draw the knee up to the sky. Plant your hands, framing the front foot, hand shoulder distance. Make sure that your palms are underneath your shoulders. We're gonna step back into our plank again. Make sure your tailbone is in line with your head. You can always take that easy plank. Just make sure your tailbone, your knees and your head are all in line here. One breath, and then we're gonna send it over towards this left wrist. So start to lift up off of the right hand into our side plank. Inhale the right arm to the sky. Keep those hips lifted. If you need an extra support, take that right leg in front, almost like a tripod, just holding you in position. Otherwise, stack your feet. Draw that right hand back down to the mat. You've got this. Take one deep breath in your plank pose. And then draw your knees down to the ground. Oh, send your hips back and roll your spine up into a kneeling position. From here, let's just take our legs out in front of us. You can keep them as bent as needed, placing your hands behind you, just as long as you can feel a hamstring stretch. You can always place a block under your knees. Just make sure you can feel some sort of stretch. If you're a little more flexible, we're just gonna rest in a forward fold here. You can always just sit up tall, straighten the legs and stay here. Maybe you wanna take a block to your legs, have it on the highest level, have your feet engaged, have your toes facing the sky. If you're a little more flexible, you're gonna keep your knees nice and strong. So you're lifting your knees towards your um, hips. And you're gonna start to fold until you feel a stretch and just rest your head onto your block. If that's as low as you can go, maybe you can touch your feet, pulling them a little further back towards you, keeping your spine nice and long. This isn't gonna be accessible to everyone, so please be wherever you are today. Maybe you can lower the block, come a little lower. Maybe you don't even need the block, and that will come with time and practice. So wherever you are, just rest. Rest down into this forward fold. Taking one more deep breath here, wherever you are. And slowly come on up. Now we're gonna sit in, in staff pose, if it's possible for your body. You've got your, your chest up nice and tall. Your legs are in a nice long line, so you're like an L shape. Try to lift your heels off the ground by squeezing your knees up towards your thighs. You're using the strength of your thighs here. You may even feel a little burn in your thighs. You may wanna place your hands either side of your hips. Keep your shoulders away from your ears though. If this is totally not possible, just lean back a little bit and maybe you can't come too forward, that's fine. You can always have, try to if you possibly can, keep your legs straight just so that you can lift those heels. If that's not possible, just be where you are, it's okay. Taking one more deep breath, just in the staff pose, lifting those heels if possible. This uses the core, it uses the, these quads. 
strengthens inside the hip flexors as well. Also strengthens this whole core, the back, the stomach. It's a fantastic pose to practice. Just keep practicing, guys. Ah, rest the, knee, the ankles back down. From here, hug your knees up towards your chest. Just take a breather, maybe even just tuck your head down towards your knees and just rest just for a moment, taking a couple of deep breaths. We're going to take one more power pose here. So taking our hands behind our knees, start to lean back, coming into our boat pose. Now, for a lot of people, this is like, I don't know, it's like the worst thing they could ever hear during a yoga class. <laughs> but trust me, as your core gets stronger, this pose just becomes beautiful and it becomes more about balance than it does about my stomach is burning. Um, so just take, take your time. Slowly lean back, keep your hands behind your knees, lift your feet off the ground. Keep them in line with your knees. You can just stay here holding behind your knees, coming out of it when you need a break. Maybe just playing around, hugging your core back. If you're a little stronger in the core, release the knees and just extend your arms out alongside the legs. Playing around again. Don't worry if you can't hold it for the whole time. You can always bring the knees down, the feet down, have a rest bring them back up so you're almost like a rocking boat and that's okay you can just keep rocking playing around with your core but if you can hold it for the three breaths three deep breaths together one more breath And release. Good job, guys. Just maybe find a little rocking motion, drawing your knees together, opening them up as you come forward. Let's rest out of our class now. So we're going to take some nice spinal twists. Very slowly come down all the way onto your back. And we're just going to Draw the knees together, extend this left leg. Take your hand to your right knee, open up through your right arm so it's in line with your shoulder, like a T shape. And then slowly draw that right knee down to the ground so you're twisting through the body, holding it with your left hand to keep it in place. And then take your gaze to the, to the right. Hug your belly button back and try to draw your right shoulder blade down to the ground. At the same time, you're trying to pull your right knee down to the ground. So right shoulder and right knee, are you're aiming to get them to touch the floor. Don't worry if you can't get quite as deep as that, but again, be where you are and breathe deep. Close your eyes and try to rest into this pose. Breathe naturally. Slowly, slowly, come out of your twist, drawing that right knee back up to centre and then hug it up towards your right armpit. And then take a grip on the inside edge of your knee and maybe you can grab the shin, maybe you can grab the foot and draw that knee 
and down towards the ground as far as you can, like a half happy baby pose. Just breathe here. And release, extend the right leg. Keep it in line with the hip and bend through the left knee. Take a grip of that left knee with your right hand. We're gonna to twist over towards the right this side this time. So open up through your right, uh, sorry, your left arm. Take it in line with your shoulder very slowly start to draw that left knee down towards the ground holding onto that knee holding it in place and then try to keep this left shoulder on the ground so you really try to get deep into this twist close your eyes everyone enjoy your breaths draw the breath all the way down to the belly and then just start to breathe naturally, just relaxing into the pose. Now slowly draw that knee back to centre. Squeeze it towards your left armpit. Lift the foot up to the sky, maybe grabbing the outside edge of the, grabbing the shin, or maybe the outside edge of the foot. Drawing that knee down towards the ground in your half happy baby pose. Keeping the right, the right side of your bum still on the ground. release that foot down. Roll onto your side body and we're going to make our way into a comfortable seat. You can always relax into Shavasana if you would like to or join me in a comfortable seat. From our comfortable seat we're just going to do a couple of little neck rolls. So draw your shoulders back and down. And just roll the head from shoulder to shoulder once again. Rest the head over towards the left shoulder and extend through the right arm. Taking three deep breaths here, allow your shoulders to hang heavy. Roll your head towards the right shoulder. Rest your right hand on your knee, extend through the left arm, take your fingertips down to the ground, lock this elbow, keep the arm nice and straight. Dropping the head to the right, breathe three deep breaths.
and then draw your head back to center. Roll your shoulders in one direction and then in the other to completely finish off our class in the correct way, guys. <laughs> Try not to miss out on this. Just sit up tall through the spine or lie down in Shavasana. We're literally just gonna take a minute of complete silence together, just resting, allowing our practice to sink in. So close your eyes, take the tops of the hands to the knees, palms face the sky. And resting the shoulders a little more. Coming back to a natural breath. Allow those thoughts to pass. Pay them no attention. Keep your attention on the silence of the room and on the sensations of the body. Start to wiggle your fingertips. Start to deepen the breath. Keep the eyes closed. Rolling the wrists with the eyes closed in one direction and then in the other. Open the eyes. Just take the hands so the thumbs are on the outside edges of your hands placing the palms on the ground, coming on forward, stretching out through the hands. Spread your fingertips, close your eyes again. Just rock gently from side to side, slightly bend the elbows, draw your shoulders down, feeling that stretch through the palms all the way up into the forearms. There was a little bit of weight put onto the hands today, which maybe you're not used to. And this can feel really delicious afterwards. Gently sway from side to side. Make sure there's no sharp pain at all. If there is, gently come back a little and don't go so deep into the stretch. And then come on up. Just give your hands a little shake out. <sighs> Inhale your hands up to the sky, close your eyes. As the palms touch, draw it to your heart center. Bow your head. Namaste, everybody. You can open your eyes. I really hope you enjoy today's class. It's something a little different, a bit, a bit stoppy, a bit starty, a bit, you know, a bit of energy built and then some resting. I hope it was enough resting. Some people may need it a little longer. So, of course, let me know if this is something you really enjoyed, this sort of building of stamina a little slower. Um, then let me know and I'll create a couple more of these for you guys. Um, I know that a lot of you have really enjoyed the yin yoga, uh, sorry, the um, vin yin classes. And I think that's kind of a similar concept is to sort of have a burst of energy and then really just relax. And I know that yoga is something a lot of people like to use as a stretchy type thing. You don't want it so much for strength. I know a lot of people are doing things like cardio and that's really their strength training. And then yoga is really for relaxation and a mindfulness. But of course, it's also a fantastic practice for the core, also for arm strength, leg strength. It really is an all round practice. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and just using it that way too, not just for stretchiness, if that makes sense. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please do let me know if you have any um, requests. I do write them down and I do try to offer them out to you guys. Um, it may take a few months, it may take a day, a week, but I will try to incorporate your ideas. And guys, find me on Facebook and Instagram. My links are below in the description. Please follow me on those platforms. 
um, and you can also sign up for my newsletter which will be wonderful to see you on there too. So until next time everyone, have a lovely day, namaste.